Hi, welcome to Eclectic Images and some more Christmas card making. This one, I'm gonna use one of our new designs, which is the Twas the Night Tree. So it's the verse that Twas the Night Before Christmas, and we're gonna be using some shimmer dust with it to create a really great background. Okay, so our stamp is actually the tree shape stamp with the little star on top. With the set though, you also get three little mice shapes. So you can actually change the card around either with making borders with the mice or popping them down by the tree or you could pop them in the tree, however you like to do it. Um, so they all come separate, so that, oh, it's come with as a set, so that you can actually use the mice however you like. But we're going to do this one with the without the mice first. So we're just going to do this with some shimmer dust. Now the shimmer dust come in a pot like this, and then I actually take them out of that pot and put some into these little pots where I can pop a pin in the top, which gives me a little hole to be able to shake the dust out of. You can actually just use it directly from the jars that they come in just opening up carefully and using a small brush just to pick out little bits of colour and drop them on. But I find I actually prefer to be able to just shake them on, so this is how I like to use them. And you will find these little containers <clears throat> on our website. Okay, so I'm going to go with some um, green tones because we're doing a tree and it's Christmas, so let's go with just some greeny tones. And we're, going, we're wanting here, I'm going to create a fairly soft background, but then add more colour in around the tree. So we're just going to shake on a little bit of, this is uh, sunflower that I'm using. We'll use some of that at the top and the bottom. I'm going to add in some Paris. And you really are not using much at all. You think, oh, that's hardly anything going on. And then when you add the water, shoom, it all happens. So yes, don't, don't feel that you have to add a lot on at this stage. Especially as for this one, as I said, we're wanting a fairly soft look to it. So now I'll grab my water spritzer and I'm just going to move my paper pad out of the way for a moment so I don't get it all wet. So we're just going to spritz underneath the card, which helps to stop it from curling up. The other thing, I'm using the Cotton Blend 210 GSM here. I could actually be using the 300 GSM, which would give me a little bit less curl. I didn't think of that when I was getting this card ready. Um, so I'm going to do a reasonable amount of spritzing here. And then I'm going to use the Tim Holtz air blower just to get a bit more splashing movement of colour there. Now we're going to use our paper towel and this is going to seem really wrong. We're actually going to take some of that off. Actually, that's something we could do if we <laughs> if I thought of it before I did that. If I actually took that off on another bit of card, we could actually be doing two backgrounds at once, couldn't we? Okay, so we've got our little bit of soft background colour there. So I'll just dry my mat, bring my scratch pad back in again and now I'm going to start painting some stronger colour on. So I'm going to be using a mixture with my um, aqua wash brushes of the medium and the filbert. I could be using the filbert or the broad, either one would work. And I'm going to use where I've put some of the shimmer dust onto a palette. So I've got the Tim Holtz palette here and I've put a little bit of shimmer dust just on the end of my spatula a little bit of dust into the wells there, then you add a bit of water and mix it up and then once it dries you've got a paint that lasts fairly well. Every now and again I do give it a good wash out because the colours can migrate out into here a bit and start getting messy. Also, if you're like me and you travel around and carry it around a bit, sometimes colours can shake from one into the other and actually contaminate each other and they're such strong vibrant colours, it doesn't take much to actually spoil your colours. So mostly it travels really well, but every now and again I do give it a bit of a wash. But now we're going to go, we'll start with some sunflower and start around the top of the tree. This isn't going to be precise colouring at all. I'm just putting a bit of colour over the words and then I'm going to get my filbert brush and just touch it to the edges of the colour there 
So we're creating a tree shape. I don't mind if it actually starts to blend out into my background a little bit. So I could even tease it out a bit more if I wanted to. Let's just bring the yellow down a little bit more, maybe on one side. And I'm just going to come into this edge and soften that edge before we put our next colour on. So let's go in with some Paris. Again, just going over the words. Well, and between the words. Who am I kidding? We're putting on as much as we want to. <laughs> And we're going to come in and just tease that a little bit, just so that it comes and... So we want strong colour in the middle, but we're not just blending out into some of those background colours. And I think if you're hearing an odd noise in the background, I think our dog's snoring. <laughs> but not wake her up, had I? Now let's grab some Lush. So I'm just giving the brush a bit of a squeeze so I get a bit of water in there just to activate that colour. Such a good green, isn't it? So I can tease that. Let me clean my brush a bit. We can tease that into the Paris. And then come in with our broad or filbert brush and just smooshing out those edges a bit. So you can see we're forming our Christmas tree shape. I think we're going to have some more of that colour and then we'll go back to the sunflower. Let's bring it in a bit stronger right to that end of that C. That's it. Okay. Now a little bit more teasing. I'm going to tease all along this bottom edge because it then tucks in as if it's sitting in a, a pot. Tease again. So just dabbing the wet brush onto the card and sort of pushing it into the colour. We've got a little bit much, there's a little bit too a darker spot in there. So I'm just putting a bit of water in there. It was actually a, um, like a crystal of colour but it meant it was actually strong enough to be obscuring the lettering. We still want to actually be able to read it. Now let's grab, go back to our sunflower. And... Tease that. Just with this brush, I'll just, the one that had the colour on it. I'll just tease where the green starts there. The green of the lush. Now we'll just smoosh a bit of water in around the edge. Oops, just give it a good rinse and get all my green off it. And smoosh that yellow out. You, you develop an, an, an angle that's best for you to work at. Um, you'll often notice if I'm watercolouring that I turn my card around so that I'm actually butting my brush right up against the edge of the embossing or the outline, whatever I'm working to. With this, I'm wanting to sort of smoosh the brush with the water into our bit of ink there. So for me, it works better to be working towards the colour so I can lay a bit of colour, a bit of water down and then smoosh it in. If I'm working on this side, I'm sort of going backwards to do that. So I'm actually better to move my card around and then smoosh it in. Okay, but that's basically our design. What else do we want to add to it? <laughs> I think we're going to add some a little bit of a border around the outer edge of it. So I'll just grab a little bit of Olympia Green. No, let's go sepia. Let's actually do something that's not in the greens that'll just give us a border without interfering with that at all. I'm just I'm looking at this. I'm thinking I want to tease that green down a little bit more. We need a bit more coming down from the tree. 
That's better. Well, it's just a bit too, just sitting right at the edge of the letters. So let's grab ourselves a brown brush, pick up some sepia, and just dust around the edge of our card. Now, of course, with something like this, where your greeting is your design, we don't need to add an extra greeting to it. Still a little bit damp. I'm just going to run the heat gun over that a bit before I keep putting my inks on around the edge. Just a bit of a dry. So yes, it's up to you with this one whether you want to shade around the edge, whether you want to cut out a Christmas tree shape from it. Or add a little bit of a swirly border around the edge could work really well. But the stamp itself is the picture and the greeting all in together. Okay. A little bit more of a dry. We really have flooded this one with water. That's better. Now it's settling for us. Um, I don't know whether to add a swirl in or whether, no, I'm happy with it like that. I just want to add some extra glitter to it. So I'll pick up something in the gold tones. I think we'll go golden rot, no. Bit of glisten. Bit of sandstone. That's going to tone in with that background sepia that we've done. So I'll just give it a squeeze on my scrap paper, make sure it's working. And I want to go over some of the letters. We'll put a little bit in our center of our star on the top of the tree. But where I'm going over the letters, I really don't want to take away from the black that's there, which is what's giving us the, the readability of it. So we're just adding a few little bits of glimmers to it. And I might just pick it out on just some of the main words. So I'm squeezing, but I'm moving at the same time so that we get a little bit of glitter shine there. And it can be done mainly because this is a calligraphy type font with wider parts and finer bits. I'm better not to cover the finer bits. So I'm just adding some to those heavier down strokes of the letters. Let's pick out a bit of house. So don't be tempted to put it on really heavy or you'll just obliterate the, what the text is saying. Don't know whether you can overdo glitter, but this would be a time when you'd find out if you can. If you do, once you've done too much, and then it's too late. Okay, so let's move this one over onto the black table. And I'd probably mount that up maybe on a dark green card or onto black card. Either one would look great. So that's just quite a quick one. Just stamping your design on. You could also stamp it embossed, that one. Embossed in black would look really good and would stand out very much from our letters. You could also emboss it in white and that would also stand out. White always stands out beautifully from the shimmer dust. So with putting the deeper colours around it, the white would have really popped. So yes, we could emboss it or you can just stamp it in something like the Versafine that's not going to bleed when you put watercolours over the top and start playing. So get out those shimmer dusts or any other pigment powders you've got and um, start smooshing some cards. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for more Crafting with Kathy. Don't forget, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, please subscribe. That way you'll get notified when we load up new um, videos. And if you'd like to go over to our Facebook page, you'll see lots of samples that we've loaded up with from different shows that I've done. We always load up lots of pictures. So that's great for some inspiration. Okay, thank you and see you again soon.